Hi friends, ever so often while automating we come across scenarios where we have to perform certain activities which explicitly require the usage of mouse or the keyboard. The most common example of it would be pressing the enter key to submit a form. Or even more commonly I would say it would be to perform a mouse hover to reveal a drop down or a sub menu. Now to handle such cases, Selenium provides us the action class. In fact, this action class can be used to handle everything or rather handle all actions related to keyboard and mouse interactions. Okay, now let's have a look at its implementation and I would be using Java. So yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, so before moving ahead, let me just show you the code that I've already written down. Right. I have written down the setup step for my test. And in that setup step, I'm using Bonnie Garcia's web driver manager to initiate my Chrome driver. Next, I'm applying some implicit weight and page load weight, and I'm, then I'm maximizing the window. Right. And then finally, I'm starting with my test. And for this video, I am using TestNG. Right. Okay. So before we move on and perform certain actions, first, let us see how to declare the action class. Right. So since it is a class, this declaration is pretty straightforward. So you do actions. Yeah, and just make sure that you import the actions class from Selenium, right? So that would be org.openqa.selenium.interactions. And there is also one action interface that is not required right now. So let's just use this actions. And I will name the reference actions itself. And then as the syntax for new object declaration goes, we will do new actions. Okay, so this particular actions class actually takes in an argument and that is the driver instance. Cool. Once this is done, that is your actions class declarations. Now I can use these, this actions reference to perform certain actions. Okay, so first let's do a mouse hover. And to do this, I would be using the semantic UI page that I have used earlier, right? But uh, I would be using a different uh, URI location. I have written that in the code itself and I have actually opened that in my page also. So in this particular page, what I would be doing is that I would be pointing to one of these elements, this one. Okay, let's point this to this one, right? And if you can see in my screen, okay, let me just zoom in a bit more so i'll go right so when i point into this element you can see the text changes right it goes from fade in to hidden so this is what i would be doing with my code so first things first i would take out the x path for this and i'll write the rest of the code right so let me just take out my x path so first i would inspect I can see that it is a div having text paid in. I think this should be unique in itself. So let's just do that. I'll do control F slash slash. It was a div and then text put the function that equal to and text paid in. Okay, so I got exactly one matching node. I can just use this particular thing as my locator. So I will do web element, call this one as, hmm, let's say, action button equal to driver dot find element by dot x path and paste in my x path over here. So, okay, I have got my web element. Now, next, I need to perform that particular action. So, to do that, I would first tap in my actions object, then put a dot and look at the drop down that I get or look at the suggestion box. Okay, and now in the suggestion box, you will find quite a few actions. Now, the mouse over action that we want would be move to element, right? Because if you translate mouse over to a simpler term, it would be that you are moving your cursor to that particular element. So that's one way of, you know, remembering or uh, relating your actions to what is there in the actions class itself. 
or rather relating what you do to what is there in the actions class itself. So you do move mouse to and I can see that it takes in a web element as its target. So I'll do this and in place of web element, I will put in the web element that I've already extracted and that is actions button. Okay. Okay. So next I'll put in dot build and dot perform. This will actually perform the action that I want my actions class to perform. We'll get into a detailed discussion for why we use dot build dot perform. But first, let's have a look at the code in action. Okay, so as we saw, the button that we were concerned with was pointed on and it's text turned to hidden from faded. Okay, so now we can surely say that this particular action worked. Okay, now as to why we had to use dot build and dot perform, right? This the reason for this is that the actions class that is implemented in Selenium is done so using a builder design pattern, right? So this design pattern is actually a creational design pattern that is used for implementing classes which have got you know a very which have got very complex object creations, right? And to handle that, this is a popular design pattern that is used okay so understanding the builder design pattern would be a topic for an entire new video in itself but just to you know to get the gist of it it is something like you know you giving order in at a restaurant so say see when you give an order at a restaurant what you usually do you call in the waiter and then you give him the give him the list of the food items you want so you have a b c d e f so that is this part right you are dot move to element action this we can chain this and have multiple actions over here so over here i can say do something like context list click and etc etc right now next the waiter will go and give that order to the chef and he will prepare the order that is the build step so in build step selenium actually processes this these and prepares what it has to be done and then finally the waiter comes and gives you the gives you the order so that you can eat so that is the perform step and with this selenium actually performs this action on the web driver so that's an easy way to remember okay so having said that uh there are two things that you actually have to remember when using actions class firstly you can change multiple actions together okay next that you would have to put in dot build dot perform to actually execute these actions okay and actually you can omit dot build itself and you can just say dot perform it will also do the same stuff that is because if you look at the implementation of dot perform you can see it already has dot build dot perform inside it so you can omit dot build if you directly want to perform whatever actions you have right so if i do this particular statement if i execute this particular code this time it will move to that element and do a context click context click stands for right click okay so let's execute this once all right this worked similarly you can perform other actions also right so you can as usually you can get the list of what all actions you have by putting a dot and looking at the suggestions box that the ide populates for you that's a very easy and simple step to look at things right and we will not be looking at each and every function but next we would certainly look at let's look at drag and drop right let's look at drag and drop and drag and drop by also if we can find an example for that okay all right so for working with drag and drop i would be looking at for manticui.com and over here we would be working with a slider so we would be working with this slider and we would try to slide it left and right 
so let's look at the code so i have already written down some actions code over here this will actually move my slider towards the right so first thing that i am doing is i am searching for that web element right i am searching for this particular web element this knob right and then once i have found that element so the, it has quite a complicated x path i will put this down in the description and yeah and then i am declaring the actions class like we did earlier and after that i am defining my actions or rather i would say i am defining what i want to do so first thing that i want to do is that i want to click and hold that particular knob so as so i have used click and hold this takes in the web element as an argument okay and after that i have put in a pause this is just so that we have a time delay between the actions so that we can actually look at it right and then after that we have i have got move by offset so what this particular function does is that it considers the current mouse location as the origin of an xy graph and moves that mouse from or moves the pointer from that origin to a x and y coordinate depending on how much you have put in over here so if we have a look at our typical graph so this 0 0 would be the location of the mouse that it considers right that it considers by default so whatever element there is or whatever the wherever the mouse is pointing it is considered as 0 0 and if you ask it to move to any point say let's just have a point like um, over here right so if you ask it to move to a point over here and this could be it's in like positive x and positive y so this can be anything say say like 4 comma 6 or whatever it is right so it will move the mouse from here to this particular point depending on what you have given as your value of your x coordinate and the y coordinate and if it is positive it will move towards the positive side it's negative it's move to it will move towards the negative side okay so that's what i am doing over here i am asking it to move 200 points on the x axis that is 200 positive points that means it will move towards the right of my screen and for y i am asking it not to move at all because i want a horizontal motion right and after that i am just releasing the mouse uh, mouse because i was doing a click and hold so i need to release it and then i am just doing a perform to perform this particular action all right now let's just run this code and things would be clear okay so my browser opened then let's wait for the slide yeah it went from this position to this position so my drag and drop actually worked right let's go back to our code okay so there is actually a short way of achieving this right we can just do drag and drop so i will do actions dot drag and drop by because i want a particular element and i do not have a destination element and the element that i am using is slide again now i need to provide the x offset so this time i will do a minus 400 so that i move towards the left side now for y again it would be zero right next i'll just do a dot perform that's it now let's just run this and see both in action okay so my page opened move towards the right then towards the left okay that was pretty fast but still that served our purpose fine so that is about drag and drop okay so again once one more thing like uh, if you do not want to use by offset you can just do dot drag and drop and provide in two web elements since i am just working with a slider i do not have a destination element that's why i used drag and drop by cool okay so that was about drag and drop now next let's have a look at some keyboard actions 
Okay, so for demonstrating the keyboard actions, I would be using the Internet Hero Heroku app. Over here, I would be using the login page and what I would be doing is that I would enter some random text in my username, then enter some random text in my password and then hit the enter key. I'll press enter, right? Don't save and I should get this in my browser. Okay, so let's go back to our code. So over here, I have already opened my browser, opened the page, then I have got the web element, then I've got the password web element. It's pretty simple. Just search for use. I search by ID, username and password. Then I have already instantiated my actions class. Now let's perform the action. So I'll do actions dot send keys. Okay. So over here you can see that we have two options for send keys send keys web element and character sequence or keys and send, send element character sequence okay so the basic logic is the same that was there for our mouse actions right so send keys i'll provide the web ele element that i want to work with that is username first and let's me just provide some random text okay next let's uh, go ahead and provide and again send keys this time I want to work with my password so password again some random text okay now finally what I want to do now is I want to do a send keys again but this time I just want to hit the enter button okay so for that what we can do is that we can use the keys enum and just select the value enter from there okay so this will tell selenium that i want to press the enter key then finally i will do a dot perform okay so this should work let's run this okay before i run this i have uh, disabled the previous two tests okay so that we have just one test run i'll just run this Okay, my browser open so the internet heroku login app opened again okay so we got your username is invalid so this particular thing worked well and good now let's go back to our code okay so this is how actually you can work with keyboards okay so before i end this video let's do something let's use whatever we have learned and perform a task let's say we can use this side itself and what we can do we can try copying this particular username so like we'll copy tom smith and then pre paste it in our username section and then we'll copy super secret password and paste it in our password section okay so we'll do copy this do a control c paste it over here then copy this again do a control c for copying and then control b to paste it over here then press r enter key to log in okay so that will help us use everything that we have learned and give us a fun activity to do okay it's a normal activity if not fun fine okay so first things first i will go back to my code and comment this section out Next, I will go back to the page and inspect this particular portion. Okay, so I can see that this is already having some demarcations with tags EM. So I guess there are only two EM tags. I'll just do a control F slash slash EM. Yeah, there are two EM tags. Let's extract these two web elements so i'm extracting tom smith and super secret password web element okay i'll go back and declare a list of web elements right call it what do we call this let's call it actual data and I'll do equal to, then I will do a driver dot find elements 
by dot tag name this time because I had a single tag and search for EM. Okay, this will give me a list wherein I would have both my elements and then I would save those two elements separately as actual user well to actual data dot get from the zeroth position then web element actual password as actual pass equal to actual data dot get first index okay now let's start performing our actions so first I will do action actions dot uh, let's start with click and hold okay so I click and hold my username actual user so I'll click and hold my actual sorry user then what I want to do is I want to press my control key for control C that means for initiating my copy so I will do dot key down I'll do keys dot control okay then I will do dot move by offset let's just move by 50 now this is just an arbit arbitrary value that I am selecting zero because there is no movement in y axis again and then I will do a dot send keys C you know for control C copy okay so before doing my before pressing my control yeah, I'll actually move and then I will do press my control and control C this should copy next what I do what I need to do is I need to paste so I'll do a dot key down and then I'll release my control key so I will do a key up key up that would be keys dot control okay so I finished copying with this action now I need to paste so for pasting I'll again do a dot dot key down but this time I'll target the web element that where I want to copy and that is username so I will do key down username and I'll do again keys dot control and I'll do a dot send keys again and this time to copy I'll say control V oh, so, sorry and this time to paste I'll say control V then I will do a key up to release my control key so keys dot control again then finally I'll do a perform okay so what we did we first clicked and hold on our actual user this and then we moved by 50 paces and then we pressed the control key then we pressed the C key to copy then we pressed the, then we released the control key and then we moved to our username and then we pressed the control key then we pressed the V key to paste and then we released the control key okay and then I am saying a perform let's look at this in action and see what happens okay so it copied m-i-t-h why was that okay this is because I... so what actually happened is that you know when you ask selenium to actually point or actually click on a particular web element it clicks it moves to the center of that web element so it moved to the center of the web element right so it moved to the center of this particular web element over here and copied this much so what we need to do is before we start copying or before we click and hold we need to move to the beginning of the element how can we 
achieve that so here i can see that 50 took me to the last so if i do minus 50 it should take me to the beginning of the element right that's just by luck that i got this okay so for this i would first do instead of click and hold over here i would first let's put a dot over here do move to element and given this element then again i will say move sorry dot move by offset and this time i would give it as minus 50 okay then zero then i'll say click and hold and remove the web element and for here and over here instead of giving just 50 i would do 100 because i moved 50 paces back right so this should work and copy my user cool let's run this okay so it copied now let's cop try and copy this one out and for that i would just copy this die action paste it over here and instead of move to element this i would say move to element what was the name actual pass actual pass and over here instead of username i will say password and uh, 50 should not suffice right so let's 50 was one two three four uh, over here it is if i move on okay this one will be big so let's just give away a hundred one hundred and over here i will just give two hundred sorry two hundred not two thousand and now let's execute this okay let's have a look at what was pasted super secret pass okay so we missed uh, some things from there okay and we have what extra spaces all right so you actually you can actually get the gist of what i'm trying to do we can hit some trial error method and actually get the exact password but right now i don't think that's worth extending the video any further okay so yeah that was all for this particular video thanks for watching and hope you have a great day and if you have got some suggestions or if you have got some comments on this please do put, put that down in the comment section below thank you